you really need to know what's in the water. So when I get to a lake, I usually put a searching pattern on and do a few casts hoping to catch a fish. Okay, chronomids, you never have enough. Damsels early spring all the way through the year. There are boatmen active in the water and you really need to know what's in the water. So when I get to a lake, I usually put a searching pattern on and do a few casts hoping to catch a fish. And then we do pump our fish, take a throat sample. So on the first picture in the corner, you see the blood worms. And then next to it is the flies I used for that. And then one picture below that is Daphnia. So Daphnia is like fleas, like water fleas. When you pump Daphnia, you just like, oh God, okay, next, what, what next? Because it's really hard to fish for fish or catch fish that's feeding on Daphnia. Daphnia usually die in the bottom. So, but we kind of came up for, with a fly for that. And you see next door to that, those little nothing looking little things those are actually daphnia flies and when they feed on daphnia those flies works works wonder i started using those a few years ago kind of came up with it i'm using daphnia fritz for that and i put dots on it in the spring right after ice up which is right now the fish still sticking to the bottom and they feed on daphnia and they feed on blood worms. So these are the first few flies beginning of season right after I saw that I, I like to use. Okay, chronomids, here we go. So you never have enough. I probably have about a thousand of them tied up from size 20 to size 10. They come in every single size and color. And you just have to have a fish gets really picky. It's really hard to believe that they can actually pick and choose color wise when you have these these chronomids on, but but they do. And in the meantime, when they when they on chronomids and it's chronomid season, the fishing is ridiculous, absolutely amazing. So that's again off the rise of keep an eye on the on the surface when you see the shacks floating on the surface you know the bugs are hatching maybe you don't see them flying yet but you can see the shacks and as soon as you see that you want to switch to chronomid also very well known if you see the um, the swallows the birds start diving down you know the hatch is on and that's when we switch to chronomid damsels and dragons so one of my favorite kind of fishing when when the damsels actually showing up I do tie damsels. Some of them are actually balanced damsel, which I do fish under an indicator. And some is just regular casting and retrieving. Early spring, the very immature damsels on the on the top picture there, just uh, I, I tie them usually from green marabou and they're really, really effective. And then later on in the season into the summer, that's when the big giant drag dragon shows up. That's more like a midwater keeping it lower, keeping it deeper, fishing. When those ones are out, fish hits really hard. So that's when my 10-pound ten, ten test tip that comes out when I'm fishing the big dragons. And yeah, that starts in the middle of the summer. But themselves, early spring, all the way through the year. Okay, mayflies. Once again, love mayfly fishing. They come in different kind of shape and form, as you can see on my flies over there. Different size nymphs, different materials I use. And mayfly pretty much starts hatching around here, beginning of May. And the when the hedge goes on crazy, the fish goes crazy for it. So it's good to have <laughs> colors, different size. You know, some had beads on it, weight. Fish it deeper, some is no weight on that, and I fish it higher up. So that's pretty much covers all the mayfly. But whatever start hatch 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 start, you just you just have to have it. Okay, boatmen and 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 back steamers, love them, love them, love them. I call them boatmen. And then really, really, it's it's apparently it's a back swimmer and a boatman. So if you're into biology, I'm sorry, but for me, they are both fans. So they all look the same. They all seem the same. Fish loves it. So when I tie my boatman, actually right off the ice off, just when the ice comes off again, there are boatmen active in the water and then late fall. I tie them sometimes to be, they float and then I make them heavier too. Really good fishing. I had a competition actually, and uh, one of Kat's favorite lake actually, well, I had a competition and I won a session there with, with one of my boatmen. And it was just amazing. Every cast I had a fish on. So it's a different technique again to fish it, you know, they swim really like lots of tiny pauses. So you cast out, you let it sink down just below the surface and then super fast, super short um, 
retrieving. That's how they swim and, and the fish loves them. Hit them hard because if they take it soft, actually the boatman will bite the fish. So they hit it really hard to kill it right away so not to get stinged by them. And how do you rig up your boatman? Do you split shot above it or a heavy weighted fly? How do you how do you set up that leader for a boatman? Okay, so for boatman, I never never any of my flies I ever use a split shot. I don't know, but fish are really sensitive in BC here, so they don't like split shots. So boatman, I tied when I tie the ones with the foam, so they they float. I use them on either an intermediate line or a type three line. And then, so it sinks down. So I just do a loop to loop connection to the fly line. And I have about, but I have the one that floats, I don't, probably about maximum two feet of, of, of the pet. That's it. So it's short, right? And then if you, if I use the one that actually sinks, so I have a bead in it or just a sinkable one, um, which I can use on my float line or intermediate line, I go about three feet for a tippet. So it's loop to loop and then just tie it on and then make sure you have a heavy tippet on because that's again, they hit it really hard not to get hurt. And, and yes, they take it hard. And here's everything else. Attractor patterns. The very first fly box, you can see the mob fly. I have them because apparently they're amazing. To be honest, truly honest, I have never used them up fly, but you can see I have a quite a few of them just because I have to have it, but just never, never used it. I do use blob and boobies, which is the next next uh, fly box, the middle one. They are really good attractor patterns and searching patterns. So in the spring or maybe the first fly I put on will be a, for a searching pattern. I, I, I put on a, a blob or a booby and fish will hit it hard. So when we say it's an attractive pattern, it doesn't look like any kind of bug. The fish just hit it because they don't know what is it, so they just have to hit it. And the way we fish boobies or blobs, it's you cast out, you let it sink down, and then strip, strip, fast, short, and then you just stop. And then wait a couple of seconds, and again, strip, strip, and then stop. So, and fish likes it and they will hit it. Just curiosity, what is it? Box number three, they mostly leeches. Again, leeches comes in every single color. I never really seen a red one, but apparently fish likes it. So the white ones are the ghost leeches. And then obviously the green ones. I don't know if you guys heard about the pattern called pumpkin head. In BC, everybody use it. You must have the, the, the pattern called pumpkin head in BC because every single lake it works in every single lake and that pattern was designed by a local gentleman and john john kent but that's one of the patterns you must have and then some vampire leeches in there it's a really good pattern again it's it's good for searching and that one was designed by todd oishi who is one of canada's best fly fishermen and some other regular leeches in there some balance some regular ones uh, mostly tied from marabou or semi seal. So on this page, again, you can see more leeches, never enough. So um, different colors. That, there's some purple leech in there, purple and black. There's a certain lake in BC and they just love purple leech for some reason. And the really top row on the first page is all pumpkin heads. And then the last one is uh, shrimp, scuds. I absolutely hate tying them. It looks as simple as it can be. I just, I don't know why I can tie anything and smalls and bigs and, and dries, spuds. I don't know. I just hate tying them. So anyway, you have to have, again, different size and color. I would say size 40, actually 16, all the way to size 10 colors from olive to dark green. And we have gold shrimp, so like a, a grayish, grayish one. And when, where you see that orange spot inside, that will be the egg. So pregnant shrimp. That's what we imitating with the orange in the middle. They fish really good. Fish loves it. If you go to any lakes around here in BC, you will see the scots swimming around the shoreline. You know, you have scot in the water. You can fish scots because fish feeding on it, obviously. So thank you, guys. Uh, might be really fast. I'm a bit nervous still. But if you have any question, feel free to ask. I can talk about fly fishing, God, hours, days, anything, long as long as possible. So um, I really enjoy fishing, and I do do lots of lots of them. So also guiding.